Arguably the worst team in the NBA to start the season has been the Detroit Pistons. Not only are they 2-21 at the time of this recording, but they've also lost 20 games in a row despite having some pretty clear talent at least on paper. Not only did the Pistons sign Monty Williams to a massive contract this offseason, but they also have some promising young pieces in the form of Cade Cunningham, Jalen Duran, Jaden Ivey, and Nassar Thompson. Despite this, they've still managed to be, again, the worst team in the NBA. Some of the issues this Pistons team has does have to do with the fact that the roster isn't nearly as good as you'd think once taking a deeper dive. However, a lot of their struggles relate back to some very poor coaching decisions by Monty Williams. The Pistons are a team I thought had a chance to push into the play-in this season, yet as of now, they'd honestly be lucky if they didn't finish the season with the worst record in league history. So in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down just how bad the Pistons have been this season and why I think they could be in for one of, if not the worst seasons in NBA history. If you're new to the channel and enjoy this content, please remember to like and subscribe. Not only does liking the video help it out in the YouTube algorithm, but I'm also trying to reach 1500 subscribers by the halfway point of the NBA season, and any help with that is greatly appreciated. But with that out of the way, let's get into it. Like I said, the Pistons have been by far the worst team in the NBA this season. Not only do they literally have the worst record in the league, but they again have lost 20 games in a row now, and if we're including last season, they've won just 4 of their last 47 games. I mean, holy shit dude. Now I never really expected them to be a playoff team, but for them to be this bad is just absurd considering the talent that they have on both sides of the ball. I will say that some people were definitely overhyping certain players heading into the season, but they still have some very impactful players that have simply been wasted. Personally, I think a lot of their struggles has to do with coaching. Now I'm no X's and O's expert, but in terms of the lineups being ran, Monty Williams is doing an insanely bad job. For example, and I don't want to disrespect him with this, Killian Hayes fucking sucks. And the fact that he's the point guard in the two lineups that have seen the floor the most this season for the Pistons is embarrassing. To put things into perspective, with Killian Hayes on the floor this season, the Pistons have an offensive rating of 106.6, which is in the 8th percentile, an effective field goal percentage of 52.1, which is in the 23rd percentile, and a turnover percentage of 16.8%, which is in the 9th percentile. While comparing Detroit's numbers with Killian Hayes on and off is like just looking at the battle of ass, it still goes to show that Hayes is a very clear negative, yet Monty Williams has been so insistent on playing him. Not only do the Pistons have Jaden Ivey coming off the bench, who is probably better at almost every aspect of basketball than Killian Hayes other than defense, but they could simply move Cade to point guard and throw someone in the starting lineup that could actually shoot the ball, because this has been arguably the biggest issue with the Pistons this season. They can't fucking shoot. On this season, the Pistons rank 26th in 3-point percentage and 27th in attempts, and it's not like they don't have good shooters. Alec Burks is shooting 38% from 3 on 5 attempts, Isaiah Stewart shooting 37% on 4 attempts, and Bojan Bogdanovic, while he's only played 4 games due to injury, has consistently been a good shooter throughout his career. The problem though is that these three don't make up for the fact that nearly everyone else on the roster has been really bad from three this year. Maybe having Bogdanovich healthy again will help this issue, but even then he can only do so much. Really, this roster just isn't that great. The young pieces they have that I mentioned earlier are playing decently enough, but it doesn't make up for the fact that guys like Killian Hayes and Marvin Bagley have been forced to do way more than they should, and their backup center as of late has been James Wiseman. Regardless of how bad the roster is, it doesn't take away from the fact that Monty hasn't done a good job at all in terms of utilizing his talent, and this is something that even he knows. Recently, he said, and I promise this is a real quote, I think we're starting to figure out that we can score if we space the floor properly. Now, for a former coach of the year that was bringing the Phoenix Suns to the finals, this is just hilarious to hear. The Pistons signed Monty Williams to a six-year, $78 million contract, which has him making roughly $13 million a season, which is more than a lot of players on the Pistons. Yet, 
he's been arguably the biggest reason for their lack of success. I will say it doesn't help that the guy who's supposed to be the franchise player for the Pistons, Cade Cunningham, hasn't been playing that well. However, he's kind of in a terrible situation playing next to, you know, Killian Hayes, and he's honestly had a good amount of bright moments this season. While his overall numbers on the year aren't the best, through his last 11 games, Cade's looked a lot better and is averaging 23 points, 4 rebounds, and 7 assists, while shooting 45% from the field and 38% from 3 on around 6 attempts a game. I hope for both his sake and the Pistons that this play can be sustainable. Cade hasn't necessarily been a bust, but considering his expectations for a first overall pick, he's been somewhat disappointing, and I don't think many people will disagree with me on that. Cade has had moments where he's looked like a future superstar, but he's also had moments where he's looked really bad. Regardless, this stretch of games does have me excited for him moving forward. It's clear that the improvement from Cade has been there, but it hasn't been nearly the same for the rest of the roster. Aside from Cade, really, the only guy on the Pistons that I can say has played at a consistently good level is Jalen Duran, who's averaging 12 points and 10 rebounds, shooting 63% from the field, and Asar Thompson is another guy I put in this category, but even then, Monty Williams has decided to bench him recently for some reason, even throwing him down in the G League, but I will say he started in their most recent loss to the Pacers, so hopefully he keeps up the good work and Monty actually rewards him for it. Not that this Pistons team is necessarily looking to win many games right now, but they have to figure out their lineups moving forward. Having Bogdanovich back will help the starting lineup out a ton, but the bench is still in need of shooting. Honestly, out of all the disappointing things that have happened with this Pistons team thus far, Monty Williams has been the biggest. A big reason so many people thought this Pistons team could push for a play-in had to do with the fact that they finally had a coach who was supposed to be allegedly as good as Monty, but thus far, he's honestly been pretty shit. There's really not much else that the Pistons can do right now, aside from simply hoping that guys like Cade, Jaden Ivey, and Asar can continue to improve their level of play while Monty Williams continues to relearn how to coach basketball. This is why I can honestly see the Pistons potentially finishing with the worst record in NBA history. Currently, they're on pace to do so, and considering the lack of any real progress, it seems pretty realistic. At the very least, they could set the record for most losses in a row, as they're currently at 20, with the record being 28, and their next nine opponents are the Sixers twice, Bucks, Hawks, Jazz, Nets twice, Celtics and Raptors. While, as Kevin Garnett said, anything is possible, I really don't see the Pistons beating any of these teams. Not at this rate at least, and it does suck to see the Pistons so bad because on paper they should be a very fun team to watch, and while I'm sure that they can be a fine team in a couple of seasons once they figure it out, things aren't looking too hot right now. But with that being said, I'm going to wrap things up here. Let me know what you think the Pistons can do to improve as the season goes on. And if you enjoyed the video, please remember to like and subscribe so I can reach my goal of 1,500 subscribers by the halfway point of the season. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see y'all in the next one.